again YouTube. I'm uh, I'm working on a project. I'm uh, I'm starting a vase, and I was turning it out of a bunch of old scrap wood which I've got laying all around my shop, and uh, I've cut everything down and all this, and I realized that this thing's going to be a little bit taller than what I'm comfortable comfortable trying to turn and finish up without a steady rest. So. Uh, I'm going to try my hand at building a, a steady rest for my lathe, and uh, I just thought you might want to tag along. Well, let's get started. I've started out, I've, I've, uh, I've just cut me a couple squares, they're 16 inch squares because my lathe is a, has a 16 inch swing. Right, we're just going to mark out these circles. some wood screws just to kind of hold these things together. Until I get a until I get it cut out. So I've got an interior circle and an exterior circle. And I need to find I'm gonna have three arms. I'm gonna have three arms on this thing. So, I need to go 120 degrees. From this point. So 120. There. Straight out, and 120 back the other way. One twenty. Right there. That'll give me all three arms where they need to be located. And that, that will get us about ready to do our layout. Now I need, well, I'll do that later. <clears throat> but I've got, basically my ring is going to be an inch and a half. I've got it divided into three, three sections. Okay, as you can see, this table is a uh, Norm Abram inspired design. I saw it on a uh, New Yankee Workshop one time and this is kind of my version of it. Uh, it works real good though. Uh, even cut large bowl blanks and it'll cut up to a 48 inch circle. So uh, anyway, I've got it marked out to cut right here. This dowel is my radius. So and right here I've, I've cut a, I've drilled a little hole right there a quarter inch hole to accept it. So all you do, the only tough part is getting that lined up on there. Okay, once it is, okay. got our, our circle cut out. Uh, I've still got these screwed together for now. Now I've got to cut my, I'm going to go ahead and cut my arms. I need three of them. I'm making them an inch and a quarter apart because the bearings that I've got use a three eighths inch bolt to go through it and I just want to have enough beef there for it. All right, inch and a quarter. Got the saw set up to make the rip. The blade barely protrudes through the wood. Now we're going to cut this down. Okay. 
Okay, another Norm Abram inspired device. It's just a little panel cutting jig. What I'm doing now is I'm going to cut these pieces down to about 10 inches. That's uh, that that'll get me way to the center, and if I need if I need to take a little bit off, I can. So the way this works is I mark 10 inches. Right there. And I just I put the mark right on the edge of the table. Right here. Where that saw cut is. And then I just make my, make my saw cut. Way, way we do it. We've got a 10-inch uh, I've my my divider lines, each at 120 degrees from each other, to give me one-third, three pie pieces. But I've also I've marked the center of one of these, of one of my arms. And I've transferred that line on up to the side right here. So I can lay this down here, line it up on the line, and line this one up on this line. And this way I can scribe my marks here so I know where to make my cuts. And I'll do that with all three. Okay? Because they, I'm going to be taking these things apart here very shortly. And uh, I want to be able to make sure I get it back together correctly. This thing will look a lot nicer when I get done. I'm going to sand it and all that good stuff too. So hopefully it'll look better than what it does. This was an old piece of uh, three quarter inch pressure treated uh, plywood. So it's actually it's been outside under my shed for a while now. Now I've got my hole cut out in the center, just like this, and what I did, I went ahead and transferred my marks off of this face down the side here. And I also, I numbered them. Well, I numbered them. So here I've got number two, or number one, number two, and number three. So when I take these apart and I cut them on the bandsaw, I can put them back right where they're supposed to go. And of course I'll use an arm to make sure that they stay correct. So, you know, just like that. And this is kind of the way it's going to look very shortly, hopefully. Without any further ado, I'm going to take these things apart. Anyway. Okay, here we go. Get my safety glasses. Machine. My mom runs a sewing machine. She makes some of the prettiest quilts you could ever imagine. Okay. Now, I've sanded these surfaces enough to give me a good, a good glue face. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put glue on, and then I'm going to put 
match these screws back up and then I'll put in more screws on each side to hold it until the glue dries. It helps you open your glue. And get it right back on that hole. Line everything up and put my screw back in. Okay. Wonderful. Everything's looking good. Everything looking good. Alright, now I'll just put a couple more in here. just to get my glue dry. Okay. Alright, I'll get the others done and I'll be right back. Okay. Now, while you were away, I, uh, I did some sanding on this uh, around the edges and all. I've got my center marks in here for my drill. I'm going to be drilling 3 8 holes through here, and I've got my center mark here. And I'm just getting ready to start making my clamp. Now the clamp, my lathe bed is four and a half inches wide, so I want this at least four and a half inches long, each one of these. Uh, it's going to be an inch and a half wide and an inch and a half thick. And it'll clamp to the it'll clamp to my ring and it'll clamp or it'll be glued and screwed to the ring and it'll be clamped down uh, to the to the lathe bed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm ripping this piece of oak down, inch and a half, inch and a half, and then I'm gonna turn it and cut four and a half, four and a half, glue them together, screw them together, and mount them on the ring. And that's what I'm about to get ready to do now. Safety glasses on. We shall get this. Oh yeah, that is a homemade rip fence also. Those bees myers, whew, boy, they're high. But anyway, I'm I'm at the right depth. I'm at the right height for the right uh, width. Okay, here we go. here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these they need to be four and a half so I'm going to go four and one eighths for the blade so I'm not going to do that because I'm they're too short it won't be safe to cut that way so I'm going to go four and a half I'm just going to line it up with this cut, with this edge right here. Raise my blade. This is an old saw that a friend of mine found in a salvage yard. It was turned upside down, laying in the mud. But I got it, and I got it trued up. It cuts really well. Cut the rest of the pieces, and I'll be I'll be gluing them up here very shortly. Okay, got my holes marked here. I'm just going to drill these up. We 
we're about ready for our bolts. I think I, yeah, popped through, but that's okay. This is just a, this is just a fixture, right? It's not, uh, I'm not going to be selling it or anything. As long as it's strong and it holds my parts. Keeps me from breaking something that could be expensive. Where I'm at now is, uh, I basically glued, got these two pieces glued together. And I'm going to glue it right straight to the ring, just like that. Right? So, I'll take my glue. Once I get everything set, then I'll put some screws through it. I'm just going to bring this up real good. Cover the whole thing real good. I've got my marks. Make sure they're lined up properly. Sort of clamp them together a little bit. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Wound up nicely. Clench these things together. Let's see. I got a big C clamp. Probably. I think that might work. Almost. Not quite. I like these clamps here. The only thing is you have to be very careful with them or they'll make everything move. So let's just see what we got. Okay. Haven't moved anything yet. On the back side of my bolts, I'm using carriage bolts. So I've actually glued the carriage bolts in place with polyurethane glue or uh, Gorilla Glue. Okay, everything's sitting nice and tight and flush. So we're just going to let that sit and dry while I start working on, on the arms for this thing. I've also got to cut my piece for the, for the middle of my bed of the lathe and uh, finish up my clamp. The clamp will be going across up under there and they'll just tighten down with the uh, with bolts. Okay, I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, this area here between uh, between these rails here is an uh, inch and a half wide. It's a half inch thick here so uh, I need to make a piece that's four and a half inches long to go under my clamps and what this piece does is it holds the whole steady rest square to the bed so I'm going to get started on that now and uh, I'm going to do that right here with my with my table saw I'm going to cut a block four and a half inches long inch and a half wide and half inch thick. That's my depth. Yep, the depth is good. Okay, that's one. I'll get the rest cut and I'll be right back. Okay, I took my little square and I drew a square line across my bed right here. So now I can bring this up and square off that front end. Very nice. And reach under here and scribe me a mark on each side. So now I know where to put my guide block. And I'm just going to glue it right onto the bottom. 
right there. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn this thing around. And we are going to work on this guide block. We're going to work on the guide block. All I'm looking to do is get it glued right there. This way, whenever I put this on the bed, it'll always be square. It'll always be square. So, and I intentionally, I cut this three eighths of an inch thick. That way, it leaves me an eighth of an inch for clamping pressure to really pull down on on these things and hold this thing in place. I'm just going to put some glue on here. All this really is going to do is it's just a guide. It holds it, uh, it make, makes this thing sit square on the lathe bed. So, we're going to put this in here. And with this being glued, it will also help hold all of this stuff together. So, make sure I'm not still on my line before I start clamping. Okay. And then, the bottom side. Get it clamped up. Make sure I'm still straight with my line. There we go, right there. Yeah, these little gripper ones, they will tend to uh, want to move with you a little bit. They, uh, they try to drag everything to one side or the other. And uh, it's really, you've really got to stay on top of it. Okay, here's my clamp block I made. It's uh, it's just the width to go up under my lathe bed to clamp up with. So I'll show you how this works. I've got a threaded rod goes straight through with a nut and and, uh, and all on the bottom. Let me see if I can line it up here. There we go. Washer on the top. A nut. Make sure your clamp box turned at a right angle to the bed. <clears throat> okay, that's hand tight. Oh, that that's really tight already. I haven't even got a gotten a wrench on well, it yet. I drilled my hole for my bolt to, that'll hold my uh, my bearing. I've marked. Well, what, it, what this was, it was 5 eighths, which is the center, and then 5 eighths up from this from this edge here. That's where I got my center point. Okay. So now, I've made marks here. These are going to be the stop points for my for my groove that I'll cut right here with the router. I, I've already set up the router to cut this. And the way I'll do this is this first mark, I'll start there on the first mark. And I'll go all the way down to the second mark. And I'll have to make multiple passes in order to accomplish this. Okay? That that's the plan anyway. Well here we go. Continue on until until I cut my grooves all the way through. They'll come out at the top. That's that's good and dead center, but it'll make it'll make nice grooves to put on my ring. 
I'll be back when I get that done. Okay, as you can see, I got my grooves cut. Got this, uh, I just got it kind of temporarily put in here. But now I'll put my, uh, I'll get ready to put my bearings in. I'm going to have to turn the wheels though. The bearings will mount inside my turned wheels. I would I want to do this out of wood just simply because I think wood's softer than the hard uh, skateboard things and uh, it actually I believe it probably cost me a little bit more money uh, for buying the bearings. I've got twenty dollars in the bearings and the bolts <laughs> so so uh, anyway that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna turn these wheels and uh, see if I can't get this thing mounted up and finished okay here I have my bearings one of my bearings I've measured this uh, outside diameter here being at uh, an inch and one eighth it's a quarter inch thick uh, I'm gonna go a little bit thicker than that I believe I'm gonna go three eighths or a half inch thick on my wheels <clears throat> but I'm not gonna make my wheels really big either uh, not like that. I'm just I'm gonna try to get maybe a quarter inch all the way around or three eighths, something like that. I'll begin by boring my hole. I've got inch and inch and an eighth Forstner bit chucked up in here. So now we're gonna go ahead and try to run this in. I'm gonna go in about an inch and a half, two inches, uh, boring, so I have plenty to work with. Piece of pecan is still a little, a little bit moist, a little bit wet. I'm almost an inch and a half mark. Okay, looks deep enough for me. Now I'm just going to turn these wheels down. Then I'm going to cut them off with a bandsaw, sand them up. So that's got my that's got my bore. Let's see how this bearing is going to fit. Oh yeah, that's oh that's going to be really nice. Really, really. Uh oh, I'm going to get it back out here. Okay, that that's that's a good fit. I'll be back. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and make you suffer through watching me turn down this spindle and all, but uh, I'm just going to I'm going to cut my diameter down a little bit more right here because I want some smaller wheels if, if I can get them, and then uh, and then I'm going to cut them off on the bandsaw and sand them down. The next time you see it, uh, I'll be mounting them on the uh, on the bearings. Okay, I've got the wheels finished. Got them turned. I ended up having to use a face screen uh, instead of the spindle. I blew about two of them apart, so uh, so now I went to a face screen turn, and they seem to be a lot stronger. <laughs> I'm going to use a little epoxy to uh, put on this flange here to help hold these things in place, so maybe they won't come flying off and. Uh, I just use a mid cure epoxy. Uh, it doesn't take too long for it to set. And uh, it really, really holds good. Uh, I get mine at Penn State. Uh, of course, you could get yours wherever you, you know, want to get it. But I know if you try to go down to the auto parts store and buy it, you will pay out the yin yang for it. Okay, now I'm just going to put get some on the flange, not inside the bearing. Do not get it inside the bearing. I'm just going to get it on this flange right here. If you 
get it inside the bearing, yeah, you'll be buying a new bearing because it will not come out and it will seize that bearing up. All right, in we go. Nice fit. Okay, now I'm going to have to let these set for a few hours to uh, set up. Uh, before I get before I mount them on the rest of it, so uh, I guess we're uh, getting very near the end here. I've enjoyed it. It's been a it's been a neat little thing. I I've seen people build things like this. Uh, maybe not quite this way, but this is the way I found that worked out for me. And maybe it can work out for you. I'm using the uh, wooden wheels. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I've never, I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube or any, anywhere else that uses uh, wooden wheels. But we okay. Two. Okay. As you can see, I've uh, got the wheels mounted on on, uh, on the bearings. I've I brought them down where they're just barely touching, and uh, I'm hoping that this thing will work very well. Don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I was going to let you watch it first. Uh, I just put an old piece of uh, uh, actually it was a practice piece. I was practicing some hollowing and. Uh, it, it, it was kind of off-center, so I returned a little bit here just to true it up. But uh, I've got my lathe set at its slowest speed. I'm going to stand back out of the way and see see what we've got here. I know it works good with the chuck, so let's see. I believe that's going to work out just fine. I believe that's going to work out just fine. Okay, well... I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you don't have a steady rest, uh, maybe you'll build one too. Uh, I really enjoyed this build. I enjoyed uh, uh, you uh, being here with me, and uh, I think I'm going to get some good use out of this thing. I'll see you down the road. Y'all have a good day.